Hello, I'm Vanessa and you're watching the Yogi Dog Moksha channel. If you like our videos, our yin yoga videos especially, please consider subscribing so you're notified of new videos as they're posted. Today we have a 75 minute yin yoga sequence which is focused on bringing some balance to the body. We'll be working the left and right sides of the body with some asymmetrical poses and then evening that out with some symmetrical poses which target the same areas. We'll also make sure we cover all areas of the body, left and right sides, front and back. And the intention of this practice is you'll walk away with a little more balance brought to both body and mind. We're going to start this practice with a few centering breaths. So find yourself in a comfortable position. You could be cross-legged or seated on a block like I am. Take a moment to settle and then close the eyes. Let go of anything else that might be happening in your day and bring your attention to your breath. Some people find it helpful to count the breath. So you could try breathing in for the count of four. And then breathing out for the count of four. So just count silently to yourself, breathing in for four, pausing briefly at the top of the breath, then breathing out for four. So just taking a few more breaths like that on your own now. Allowing the body to relax as you focus on the breath. Inhaling and exhaling. And then making your next breath the last before we gently open the eyes. Coming back to our normal breath, preparing to move into our first posture. For this practice today, it may be helpful if you have a block or a bolster. If you don't have a block or bolster, perhaps a folded towel. We do have some postures where we may be making use of these props today. We're going to come into our first posture, which is focused on the outer hips. So to do that, we want to stack one knee on top of the other. You could come onto all fours and just bring your left leg. So the left knee comes behind the right before sitting back. If you find that this gives you any pain or pinching in the lower knee, you can always straighten that leg. You'll still be getting that stretch on that outer hip of the top leg. If this is not comfortable for you, you could also adjust the position of the feet further forward so that you're reducing the pressure in the knee or perhaps even stack one foot on top of the other knee. So just finding the posture that's comfortable for you, looking for that gentle stretch in the outer hip. 
Some people will feel that in this upright seated position, or if you're looking for a little more, you can always allow the body to fold forward over that top knee. If you'd like to bring the stretch also into the upper body, you could choose to add eagle arms here. So bringing one arm on top of the other, crossing at the wrists or bringing the backs of the palms together. That will bring an additional stretch or bonus stretch through the shoulders or the upper back. So just finding your position and settling in here You may like to close the eyes and take your attention to the area where you're feeling that stretch, perhaps in the glute, the outer side of the hip, feel it coming down the outside of the thigh. Most people feel this stretch primarily in the top leg, but some people feel this stretch in both legs when they come into this posture. Everybody is different, so know that what you're feeling is right for you and your body. So continuing to breathe. We're coming into our last 30 seconds in this posture now. So if you'd like to fold forward just a little bit more to intensify that stretch before we come out, feel free to do so. Or if you're finding the stretches too much, you can also come back a little. So just taking your final breath in this posture and as you're ready, slowly starting to straighten up, perhaps bringing the legs out in front, just allowing the blood flow to return to normal before we take it to the other side. So this time we want the left knee on top. You can come into the posture from your seated position or I personally like to come up to all fours. I find it allows me to better stack the knees one on top of the other. Adjust your feet to a comfortable position. Remembering you could straighten the lower leg if you wish to here. You'll still feel that stretch in that outer hip of the top leg. And know that on this side, it's quite normal to feel very different to the sensations that you felt on the other side. One side of your body may be tighter than the other. So all you can do is work with the flexibility or mobility that you have available to you. Don't try to imitate what you did on one side on the other because it's not always going to be possible to do that. So finding your stretch here, again you may choose to add in eagle arms for that additional shoulder stretch if you wish. Allowing the body to fold forward over that top knee will intensify the stretch in the outer hip. So focusing on the glute, hip, thigh area, outer thigh area of the top leg 
noticing what you feel as so we just settle into the posture here. Allowing any tension in the muscles to relax. Remembering in yin, we're trying to work with relaxed muscles. So when we talk about the target area, we talk about particular muscle groups, but it's not just the muscles, but all the connective tissues in around that area that we want to work with in these postures. So allowing the muscles to relax helps to ensure we let the stretch move into the connective tissues, the fascia, the tendons and ligaments. So allowing your body to relax as much as you can. Taking the opportunity in these final few moments in the posture to fold a little deeper if you wish. And with your next breath, coming back to an upright position, bringing the legs out in front of you, moving slowly, gently. We have held our body in that position for a few minutes there, so just acknowledging that you may feel some fragility in the body. We're just going to rest here for a minute more or so, allowing our body to absorb the benefits of the last posture, allowing the blood flow to return to normal. Feeling the rebound or the echo of that last pose. So gently preparing now, we're going to start to move into our next posture. We're gonna be working the groin or the inner thigh area. And we're gonna start by doing an asymmetrical posture. So one that will work each side individually, led by a symmetrical posture, which will work both sides of the groin at once. So we'll be coming into a half butterfly position. We're gonna bring the right foot in towards the upper thigh of the left leg. So your foot could be anywhere really, from the shin right up to the upper thigh, just finding where is comfortable for you. And because we're working the inner thigh area, the groin, we're gonna allow the body to fall directly forward here. We're not looking to fold over that left leg, we're looking to fold forward towards the center. So allow your body to move forward, using your hands to walk forward here till you find a position where you can feel that stretch down the inner thigh of your straight leg. So finding your edge here, you may find you need to take a little bit of weight into the hands, the arms, depending on where you find that stretch. For some people that can be lying flat down on the floor. For other people they need to hold a little bit of body weight in their arms. 
wherever you are, as long as you're feeling something down your inner leg, then know you're doing the posture correctly. So settling in here, wherever you don't have muscles engaged to support yourself, trying to relax. Directing the breath to any areas where you may be feeling tension. Allowing the head to drop forward and just enjoying the stretch that you're feeling in this posture. If you find your mind is wandering in these longer periods of silence, just try to bring your attention back to the target area. Notice what you're feeling down the inside of your left leg. Is it just at the top of the leg or does the sensation run right the way down the leg? Maybe you feel something down the length of the leg to your foot. Maybe you feel it more in the groin area, or maybe you feel it more stretching the hamstrings. And gently coming back to an upright position now, we're going to swap to the other side. So moving slowly, bringing that right leg out straight, left leg bends at the knee. Foot comes to wherever is comfortable for you. So find your position and then allowing the body to move forward centrally. So we're not looking to fold over that right leg. We're looking to move forward. So finding the place that's right for you where you can feel that stretch down the inner right leg. Allow the body to sink here allow the muscles to relax noticing what feels different this time around is your right leg perhaps a little tighter than the left or did you get more sensation on the left side Allow your breath to settle you into the pose. Sometimes as we breathe out, we might find we can sink a little deeper. But never going beyond what is a comfortable stretch. We're not pushing to see how far we can bend or stretch in these poses. We're looking for a position we can comfortably hold for three to four minutes. Allowing the natural structures within the body to relax and stretch without being forced. Always remembering to breathe. Allowing the breath 
relax the muscles and connective tissues And now, with your next breath, slowly walking back to an upright position. Extending the leg. We're gonna keep our legs in this V here. So, generally 90 degrees is a good place to start. Some people can take their legs a little further apart. We're now going to work both sides of the groin muscles together, so, Finding the posture that is right for you today and then just walking the body forward gently coming forward you're looking to feel that stretch down the inside of both legs our previous postures worked the left and right side separately we're now looking for that stretch down both sides of the groin. Going to your first edge and then settling into stillness. You could try dropping the head here for a little bit of a stretch through the upper back or as you lift your head up and flatten the back, you'll find that the stretch moves more into the groin area. So just working what you need or what your body needs today. Settle into your posture. And I'll leave you here for a couple of minutes in silence to enjoy this stretch down the inside of both legs. Gently coming out of that pose now, we're going to take a rebound here, so perhaps moving to a position where you're lying on your back, on your mat. Allow your body to relax into the ground. Just a few breaths here. 
noticing the effect of those last stretches on the inner thighs, inner legs. Just taking a pause before we move into our next posture. So with your next breath, coming back to an upright position, we're going to be targeting the hamstrings or the back of the legs next. So we're returning to that half butterfly position. We just perform left leg out straight, right leg comes in, foot against the thigh or lower down on that left leg. This time we're going to be bending over that leg, so allow your body to turn slightly towards the left and then just folding gently over the leg, coming down just as far as is comfortable for you. We're looking to feel a stretch down the back side of your left leg here. So again, for some people, they may feel that sitting upright if they have very tight hamstring, but other people may be folded completely down over their leg. Just finding what works for you today. Looking for a position where you can come feel something down the back of that leg, but which you can comfortably hold for three minutes or so. Perhaps using the breath to allow you to settle into the position. Sending the breath to any areas that need to relax where you need to let tension go. Enjoying that stretch right down the back side of the left leg. Some people may find they have a bit of tension on the lower back of the right hand side as they're bent over here. So just letting the breath dissolve that tension. As you're finding stillness in this posture. As we hold in a yin posture, sometimes we may find that the edge moves a little. So if you feel comfortable to fold a little deeper here, you're welcome to do so. Or if at any time, in any posture, the discomfort becomes too much, if you're feeling sharp pains or tingling, then you should always feel free to back out of the posture as well. 
And we're all going to come back up now and switch to the right hand side. So right leg comes out straight, left leg comes in towards that right leg. Turning your body to face over the extended leg here and then just allowing the body to fold forward. Perhaps walking forward with your hands, just finding that position where you're comfortable, where you find a comfortable stretch down the back side of that leg. Allowing the muscles here to relax. Let go of any tension in the foot. Head can be heavy here. Eyes closed sometimes allow us to sink a little deeper into the posture. In some of our other yoga videos, we've talked about the three principles of yin yoga, about finding your edge, finding stillness, and then holding for some time. So while I talk about sinking a little deeper or perhaps coming out of the posture, we want to ensure that when we are in the posture, we're holding that in stillness to really get the benefits of the pose. So you should always feel free to sink a little deeper or move out of the pose if you need to. But if you don't need to, if you're feeling okay where you are, then try not to fidget or move and just hold that position in stillness. We want to try and ignore any distractions that might come our way, feeling a need to itch or scratch, adjust clothing, Just send your attention to the target area that we're working. In this case, the back of the right leg, trying to keep your attention on noticing what it is you feel. And then slowly, when you're ready, walking back up now. We're going to bring both legs together now, so I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see. Legs are out straight. For you that may be close together, or for some people it may be further apart. So just finding a position where your legs feel comfortable. We work the left and right hamstrings. Now we're going to work both hamstrings together and the whole back body. So coming forward into our caterpillar pose, we're just going to bend forward over our legs, feeling that stretch right down the back of the legs. And if you allow your head to drop forward, rounding the back, you'll also feel a stretch right down the back body. Some people find they like to sit up here on a cushion or a block. It just allows them to fold forward a little more easily. Just placing the support under the back of the hips if you need it. Some people like to take hold of their feet. We're not pulling here. We're looking just to ensure that we can fold our body to a position where we're feeling that stretch. And of course, 
you don't have to come forward as far as I'm demonstrating. You may feel that stretch just seated upright or perhaps just slightly bowing your head forward. So just finding the position where you feel a stretch down the back of your legs, ideally down the back side of your body as well. Finding that edge, moving to stillness. And then we're going to hold here. Remembering if we're going to allow the connective tissues to stretch, we want to relax the muscles. So ensuring your feet and legs are relaxed. Muscles in the back are relaxed. Shoulders are relaxed. Head can drop forward or perhaps be supported on a block. With your next breath, slowly, gently coming out of pose. Leaning backwards or lying down on the mat. Just letting your body fall into a comfortable position. Allowing the blood flow and the energy in the body to stabilize. We've worked the left hamstrings and then the right hamstrings and then both sides together. And we've also stretched the back so the muscles and the bones of the spine. So taking some time to notice what we feel in the body after those last postures. And now in your own time, we're going to push back up to a seated position. We've worked the hips and the glutes, the groin, inner thighs, and the backs of the thighs and legs. Now we're going to work the muscles on the tops of the thighs, the quad muscles. And we're going to start by coming into our half saddle position. So left leg is going to bend come alongside your hip. Some people may already feel a stretch here coming down the front of that leg, front of the thigh. For other people they may find they need to adjust the position of the foot, so sitting up on the foot perhaps may help them feel that stretch. So just finding where is comfortable for you. We're looking for a stretch to the quad muscles of the left leg, the top of the thigh. 
And as you settle here, if you find that you need to do a little more to find that stretch, then you can just allow your body to come backwards, perhaps coming down onto the elbows, maybe supporting your body with a bolster. You may even find that you like to bring the body right back down onto the mat here. Just relaxing into your chosen position. Feeling that stretch down the front of the leg. Maybe getting a bit of a bonus stretch through the toes and ankle that left leg. If you're laying down like I am, you may also be feeling it, the stretch move up into the hip flexor area. Just allowing your body to relax wherever you are. A further option is to bring the arms up above the head, perhaps taking hold of opposite elbows. You may find that doing so helps to bring the stretch, not only through the top of the thigh, but also up through the front of the whole torso. Coming out of the pose now, we're going to move to the other side. So just gently pushing yourself back up, or if you're already seated upright, just allowing your leg to unfold. You may like to give it a little shake here. Before we bend the right leg up alongside us, or sitting up on the ankle if required. Feeling Stretch down the front of the right thigh this time. Noticing whether it feels different to the left side. Observing how far you need to move to feel that same stretch on, on the right side. Perhaps this time you'll find that you need to sit more upright or perhaps on this side you can try leaning back, even lying back on the mat. Finding your position and then becoming still. Holding here.
and once again it's time to move we're going to slowly bring the body back up straighten out that right leg just taking a moment here maybe some small movements of the feet and ankles we've worked the left and right side separately so once again we're going to work both sides at the same time I'm going to be using a bolster in this pose so if you have a bolster or a cushion pillow you may choose to use that here um, some people like to use a block or the or a folded towel some people don't need it at all so just experiment and find the variation that works for you today I'm going to come into a kneeling position hips can either be between the knees or on top of the heels just sitting in this upright position for some people will bring a very intense stretch to the front of the quads so feel free to remain here if this is giving you enough stretch today if you're looking for a little more just allowing your body to come backwards either support it on a bolster or a block or you may choose to lay completely down on the mat as you come back you'll begin to feel that stretch down the front of the thighs the quads coming up into the hip flexors maybe even coming up the front of the body You can intensify this by raising the arms over above the head. So finding your appropriate edge for today, a position that you can hold for some time. Relaxing into that position. Sending your attention to our target areas of the thighs, the front of the body. If you are laying completely back on the mat, you may find that you're feeling a little compression in the lower back here, sacral area. That is completely normal, and it's good to feel a little bit of compression in our lower back. But we don't want that compression to be too much. So if you're very uncomfortable here, then just bring yourself back up a little. You never want to be feeling pinching or pain in a position, so always feeling free to adjust, come out of the pose if you need to. Remembering that we want to stress our body in a healthy way, but we never want to be causing damage to our body. So if you believe there's a risk of injury, then being responsible for our own practice and making a decision to adjust as is necessary. So gently coming back out of the pose now. Moving slowly, especially if you've been lying right back in this posture. Unfolding the legs, moving the bolster out the way if you need to and then coming to lie back on your mat for a rebound here. Taking a moment here to notice the effects of that last posture. Taking notice of what you're feeling through the legs, the lower body.
You may notice a sensation of tingling, or warmth, or heat, or even a cold sensation. Whatever you're feeling is a normal reaction. Just taking one more breath here before pushing back to an upright position. So we've worked all sides of the legs and the front and back sides of our body. We're now going to work the oblique muscles and the side muscles of our body. So again, taking your block or folded towel, the bolster here. We're gonna come onto our left side into a mermaid position. Legs can be bent or straight here. You're gonna bring that bolster, block or folded towel just under the left side of your body. Allowing the body to drape over it. So we're looking to feel a stretch down the right side of the body here. You may like to bring your arm up and over. You may like to rest your head in your hand or on a block. Finding a position that gives you a stretch all the way down the right hand side of your body. Finding your posture, settling into stillness here. whatever position for your arms and legs that allows you to feel that stretch but where you can be comfortable enough to hold the position in stillness. Remembering to try and relax the muscles in the body. Allowing the stretch to move to the connective tissues. Helping to allow the layers of fascia in our body to move and glide over one another and providing a healthy stress and stretch to the tendons, ligaments, muscles. If your arm was raised over your head, now bringing that back down alongside your body, perhaps using your hands to gently push yourself back to upright. We're going to move to the other side now, so you may need to, you may be able to just turn over or you may need to switch the position of your bolster. Finding the position where you can bend across the bolster 
so that we feel that stretch down the left hand side of the body this time. Remembering legs could be bent or straight. Underneath arm could be bent or straight, perhaps you may like to rest your head in your hand. Top arm can be alongside the body, on top of the body, or maybe you're reaching up and overhead to intensify that stretch down the left hand side. And once again, as I've mentioned already in this practice, you may find that the way the left side of your body feels is very different to the way the right side of the body feels. So I tend to find that the left side of my side body is a lot tighter. So for me, I feel this stretch a lot more on this side. So taking the time to stretch both sides allows us to try and relieve some of that excess tightness. Become a bit more balanced in both sides of our body. If you're doing this practice at home and you find that one side is tighter than the other, in any of the target areas, you may like to pause the video and spend a little extra time on that side. You need to make the practice your own, so be listening to your own body, what it tells you and moving in a way that supports what you need at this point. So moving slowly now, we're going to come out of this pose, move the bolster or block aside and just return to lying on our back, coming into our rebound position, just taking a few breaths here. We have one more pose remaining now before we end our practice with Shavasana. 
we're going to come into a spinal twist so remaining lying on your back bring the right knee in towards your chest maybe squeezing in towards the chest a little And if you prefer to adjust your position of the hips, then you can do that. And then when you're ready, using your left hand, just assisting the right leg to come across the body gently towards the floor. Feeling that twist in the spine here. Your knee may or may not be touching the floor. You may like to use a block or blanket for support here. Right arm may be out to the side or up above your head. Opening up through the chest and shoulders on the right hand side. Feeling the twist in the spine, maybe also in your oblique muscles. You may also feel some stretch in the glute muscles of that top leg. Head may be turned to the left or to the right, depending on what you find most comfortable for your neck. Finding a position where you can enjoy this twist here, ringing out of the body. And gently now, bringing your awareness back, unwinding the body, preparing to take the twist to the other side, bringing the legs out straight, We're going to bring the left knee this time in towards the chest, giving it a little squeeze here. Remembering you can adjust the position of your hips if you wish. And then allowing that top leg to fall across the body towards the floor. May not be touching the floor and that's okay. Using your arms here to open up through the chest and shoulders. Remembering you can also adjust the position of your head to find a comfortable position or comfortable stretch if 
for your neck. And when you've found that, just relaxing into the position, finding stillness, enjoying this last twisting posture. With each breath, allowing yourself to relax further into the pose. Very gently, when you're ready, coming out of that pose, unwinding, we're not going too far, we're just going to come to lie straight back on the mat. Arms and legs a comfortable distance away from the body. Adjusting the shoulders to find a position where your body can fully relax. Allowing the body to become heavy. Today we have worked all sides of the body and so now we're just going to take the time to absorb the benefits of our practice.
just starting now to bring some awareness back to the body, perhaps bringing some gentle movement to the fingers and toes, waking the body back up. As you're ready, you can roll to one side. And gently, slowly push yourself back to an upright position. Taking just a moment here before you get up and start moving. Perhaps taking one more deep breath in, long exhale. I hope you enjoyed this practice. I look forward to practicing with you again soon. Namaste.